and welcome to Big Oggy World. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I apologise for the worrying in the background because I've got a cake baking. So we're going to do something that we've, I don't think we've done on Big Oggy World up until now and that is a breakfast recipe. Now I guess this would be the type of recipe that you might do for a weekend, sort of a long lazy brunch type thing but I'm doing it because our daughter has a job at the weekends and tomorrow she's got a long day. So she's going in from about 11 right until close, which is gonna be about six o'clock, something like that. So I wanna give, I mean, she'll get a break during the day, but I wanna give her a good breakfast to send her off with. Um, I picked up this magazine. It's Woman and Home Complete Cookbook. Um, Woman and Home do these random books every now and again which are just full of recipes that have been generally in the Woman and Home magazine but this is just literally a group of recipes so um, sometimes they're good sometimes they're not so good this one's got quite a few nice recipes in and I am going to make a there it is a French toast berry loaf it's sort of a tear and share jobby um, but it's yummy and it's fruity and it's just the sort of thing that you want if you've got a hard day at work. So it says to use a sourdough loaf, which I don't have. All I could get was a white cob, but that will do. That will do. You just need a loaf, something that's not already sliced. And then all you do is you cut it into diamonds. Now, luckily enough, or thankfully, our baker has already done a bit of it for me, but so, so I can sort of follow his lines, if you like. So cut into your loaf, but don't cut all the way to the bottom, obviously, because you don't want it to fall apart at this point. If you cut it sort of into thick slices one way, And then turn it round and do it the other way it'll be perfect so I'm doing this now because ideally you want to start this the day before you want it you can do it up to 20 minutes before you try and bake it but the longer you leave it to soak in the goodness the more mingled the flavors will be and the better the results will be so let's finish cutting this into little diamondy type shapes make them as big or as small as you want I guess but don't make them too small because in the morning before you bake this beauty you are going to shove pieces of fruit into the gaps so make the gaps big enough for you to get something in there there so there's my loaf, as you can see. I've not gone all the way through, but I've split it down the middle. Now, you're gonna want, get rid of these crumbs. You're gonna wanna put it into a um, oven-proof dish, because you don't wanna have to be moving it out of the dish in the morning, okay? So shove it in there, it's not quite big enough, but it'll do. And then you mix the milk, the double cream, like I said, this is going to be a absolute treat for her for tomorrow morning. So that's milk, double cream, vanilla. Now you can use vanilla paste. It says paste, but I didn't have paste, so that's um, vanilla extract. Please don't use essence. Essence is not real vanilla, it's just a chemical. Some cinnamon. And then two large eggs and one extra yolk. But save the white because you can use the white to glaze the top in the morning, okay? So two large eggs, one yolk. In they go. And then we're gonna beat that all together. Now, you're gonna pour this all over your bread. 
Now I'm going to try and sort of get some in the gaps because I don't really want it all to just run off. And the ideal is, is that we let this loaf soak in all of this unctuousness overnight in the fridge. Please make sure you keep it in the fridge because obviously you've got milk and cream and if you don't it will just be a sour, horrible mess. And that is as much as we're going to do now. I'm going to cover it in cling film and I'm going to put it into the fridge and it's going to sit there all night. Tomorrow morning I am going to preheat my oven to 180 or 200 if you haven't got a fan or gas mark four and then if any of this juice is remaining I'm going to try and scoop it up and then put it back in the middle and I'm going to take blueberries and raspberries and push them into the gaps in the bread. Once you've done that we are going to bake it and it's going to take, hmm, let me see, It's going to take 45 to 50 minutes to bake. Um, once you've baked it, the middle's going to be lovely and gooey and the outside's going to be lovely and crispy. And then it's going to be delicious. So that's all we're going to do for now. I'm going to wrap it, put it in the fridge and leave it. If you don't want to leave this overnight, you can do it like 20 minutes before. But obviously the longer you leave the bread to soak in the juices, the better the results will be. So um, I will see you bright and early in the morning, ready to bake our French toast bread. See you then. Good morning, world watchers. So it's now quarter to nine on a Sunday morning. I know, you're not gonna see this on a Sunday, but um, today is one of the days that Madame works. So today is the day that she's gonna get a nice breakfast before she goes. So we soaked our bread overnight and you probably can't see but the tiniest tiniest little bit of cream is left so it's been nicely soaked so what we're going to do now is put the fruit into the gaps and then we will uh, wash it with egg white to make it a nice brown color and also the other thing for using the egg white is because we're going to sprinkle demerara sugar over it so it's going to have a nice crispy top on it as well so th and the egg white will help that stick so I'm going to crack on with my raspberries and blueberries I'm just going to like put them all turn if you like a good mix and then um, I'll be back Now when you're doing this, don't worry about squashing the raspberries because the more squished up they are, the more juice you're going to get run from them, which I think will be lush anyway. And look at the size of these blueberries. It's obviously that time of year when blueberries are doing well, but geez, I've not seen them that chunky for I don't know how long. You can literally put as much or as little fruit in as you like, but remember, if your kids are anything like my kids and they're a bit fussy, we're working towards one of their five a day. And as I said yesterday, you can use any berries that you want. So if yours prefer strawberries, then go with strawberries. Right, so that is my fruit in. I'm going to get my dessert spoon and see, I think, literally, look. There is not even enough to spoon anything out. So I'm going to give up on that one. So what I've done is whipped up the egg white a little bit just to try and break it up. And then I'm just going to paint over the top. Right, that's nicely done. Demerara sugar. Again, if you don't want to put demerara over, if you've got, a, you know, if you're cutting down on sugars or whatever, you don't have to. It just makes a nice crispy top. And again, it says on the recipe a tablespoon, but you use what you want. This is sort of, 
this recipe is a jumping off point so you add or detract or whatever the whatever you want the other thing I think would be really good with this is if say for argument's sake your kids will only eat raspberries rather than stuff the whole thing with raspberries why not get some ch chocolate chips or even a chocolate chunk you know the chunks that go in muffins and put like raspberry and chocolate that would go absolutely fantastic it would be lush so anyway this is now ready to go into the oven the oven's heated at 180 gas mark 4 i believe let me check that yep gas mark 4 if you don't have a fan oven it's 200 degrees and it's going to go in for about 45 to 50 minutes I'm going to probably check it after about 40 minutes to see where we're going but because everything's come straight out of the fridge it's going to take a little while for it to warm through so keep an eye on it you don't want it to burn um, we're just waiting for it to crisp up and go lush so I'll be back when it's done okay so my bread has been in for 45 minutes and that is what it looks like it smells wonderful it's absolutely scorching hot so I'm not going to do anything with it for a few minutes and um, to serve it up you can literally put the whole thing on the table and just let people tear pieces off it's a tear and share jobby or you can do what I'm going to do and that is cut off a chunk put it on a plate and then you drizzle with maple syrup and before I cut it I'm going to um, dust with icing sugar now the recipe does say with the maple syrup to pour the maple syrup over the top of the whole loaf but if you've got people that aren't keen on maple syrup or some like more than others etc I'd sort of suggest that you do it to the individual portion unless you're all going to sit there and tear at it. So I'll be back in a few minutes with it on a plate for you to see. Okay so I've dusted it with ice and sugar as you can see I'm going to cut out a chunk for the hard worker upstairs and then um, see what it looks like. You can see the raspberry juice is running which is lush and there we have it so you can see the fruit is all sort of cooked down and disintegrated it smells wonderful it's nice and gooey inside and nice and crispy on the outside so all that's left is a little drizzle of maple syrup Remember, there's no actual sugar in the recipe. The only sugar on this is the demerara that we sprinkle on the top and obviously the little bit of icing sugar I've put on. So that, my friends, is French toast berry loaf. Certainly worth making. If you like a nice relaxed weekend breakfast for everybody or brunch for everybody to join in, I'd highly recommend it. Cheap, cheerful and absolutely delish. Thank you all for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the recipe. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you have, thank you very much. Um, tell your friends all about us. Come and find us on all other social medias. We're out there on Big Oggy World. And we will see you all again really soon. Bye for now.